Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to Oculus Occulta. My name is Kiki and today we'll be looking at all the different meanings of the Hierophant card from the Rider Waite Tarot deck. As we usually do, we will jump right in. We start, as always, by describing what we see on the card as a picture. We see a somewhat serious looking figure seated in front of two bald men who are leaning in front of him. He is facing us while the two men are facing directly away from us. The figure is wearing a large three-tiered crown, a red robe, and in his left hand is a staff that has a triple cross at the top of it. His right hand is making a gesture called the hand of benediction, with two fingers pointing upwards and two fingers pointing downwards. Like the high priestess before him and the justice card which will come after him, the hierophant is seated between two pillars. Between the two bald men and at the hierophant's feet are two crossed keys. The major colors on this card include yellow, red, and gray. As we have done before, we will be sourcing Teresa Reed's tarot coloring book for the color symbolism. According to Reed, red represents vitality, love, passion, action, and danger, while yellow represents intelligence, creativity, students, positivity, and healing. Gray represents depression and mystery. I think the best place to start with this card is to define the term hierophant. It is a Greek designation whose roots come from the words holy and to show. The Hierophant title was given to someone who essentially taught sacred religious or arcane spiritual principles to congregants or followers. The word's meaning is closest to high priest, and in ancient Greece, the high priest and the high priestess worked together and were of equal rank. In some decks, such as the Thompson Lang Tarot, the Tarot de Marseille, and the Druid Craft deck, the Hierophant is called the Great Priest, the Pope, or the High Priest, respectively. The Marseille term makes sense because the Pope title is the highest level of religious status in the Catholic Church, and much of the Hierophant's card symbolism in the Rider Waite system comes from Christian iconography. For instance, the Hierophant's right hand is making the sign of benediction, which consists of two fingers pointing upwards and two fingers pointing downwards. The origin of the hand of benediction, also sometimes called the papal hand, is somewhat controversial, but it is suggested that the gesture originated with St. Peter, one of the twelve apostles of Jesus Christ. If we only consider the occult meaning of this hand sign and not the history or origin of it, we might come to recognize a phrase we saw in the Magician card, namely, as above, so below. More in theme with this card, however, is the duality of heaven versus earth. Because the Hierophant represents someone who teaches others about religious concepts, we could say this hand gesture suggests his ability to pull ideas or messages from the heavens down to the earth for us, acting as something of a go-between or conduit. In fact, the term pontifex or pontiff is Latin for bridge builder. The Pope acts as the bridge between heaven and earth, between us and God. In the Hierophant's left hand, we see a triple cross or the papal cross. In practical terms, this particular symbol represents rank, as a double cross would represent the rank below the Pope, the Archbishop. It is something akin to the bars used to indicate rank on military insignia. In occult terms, however, the triple cross could represent triplicity, as does the three-tiered crown the Hierophant is wearing. The theme of triplicities is fairly common in many religions, including Abrahamic, Vedic, and pagan-based ideologies. In Christianity, the most famous triplicity is the concept of the Trinity, or Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. There were also three crosses erected the day Jesus was crucified on Calvary Hill, and Jesus rose from the dead on the third day after his crucifixion. While we could ascribe many different meanings to the triplicity represented by the Hierophant, I think the easiest set would be the triplicity of mind, body, and spirit. However, any triplicity you prefer can be used here. In addition to triplicity, the theme of duality is also seen in the two pillars, the two men at the Pope's feet, and the two crossed keys between them. We've seen in multiple other cards, such as the High Priestess, the Empress, and the Emperor, the theme of duality, so there isn't too much need to discuss it here, except to say that these pillars may represent the conflict between good and evil. There are other interpretations that suggest the pillars represent law versus liberty, mercy versus severity, or obedience versus disobedience. With regards to the two bald men in front of the Hierophant, because of the heavy Christian iconography, it seems safe to assume that these two men are monks who have shaved their heads to represent their status. The term for shaving the hair in this particular pattern is called tonsure, and is a symbol for religious piety or commitment to God. Interestingly, it is not just Orthodox Christians or Catholic monks who shave their heads in religious devotion. 
Both Buddhist and Hindu monks and ascetics shave their heads as a symbol of piety, devotion, or commitment to religious practice. Perhaps less extreme than shaving one's head, but visually similar to the tonsure practice of Christian monks, is the Jewish kippah or yarmulke and the larger Muslim kufi, both of which are worn by men as a symbol of their devotion and commitment to God. As one Jewish man put it to me many years ago, the kippah reminds me of God's presence in my life at all times. It is on top of my head because I am constantly thinking about him. The robes the two monks are wearing are also interesting, as the one on the left is decorated with red roses and the one on the right is decorated with white lilies. We've seen these two symbols before, especially in the magician card. We also mentioned that red roses could represent desire or love, while the white lilies represent purity and thought. Put together, these two monks may represent love and purity or pure thoughts, which are both fairly common tenets in many religions. The two crossed keys in front of the hierophant and between the monks are a symbol for the keys of heaven, which is a metaphor for access to the divine. The keys of heaven were actually promised to St. Peter, and he is often seen in popular culture references and comics as being the literal gatekeeper to heaven, as may be understood in the term St. Peter at the pearly gates. The crossed keys iconography is the emblem of the papacy, or seat of the pope, used by the Catholic Church. Because the Hierophant is not alone on the card, we can ascribe the theme of community or the public to this card. The two monks in front of the Pope represent the congregation at large, and thus the Hierophant provides religious instruction to the public, unlike the High Priestess, who has occult knowledge which she does not share freely. The Magician, too, has occult knowledge, but he is not necessarily bound by religious authority or rank. He is free to share his talents and knowledge with whomever he pleases if he chooses to do so. He may also choose to keep his knowledge to himself, to no detrimental consequences. The Hierophant, however, is obligated by his position and his religion to share knowledge and enlighten as many people as possible. So, in essence, this card is the opposite of a cult. The Pope or the Hierophant represents sharing of information, especially within a community, and this can manifest as multiple things in the real world, such as a formal church setting, an institution of higher learning, a seminar or conference where public speakers talk to the masses, at a graduation ceremony where speeches are given and students are ranked on their academic successes, or at a wedding ceremony where two people are ceremoniously bound to one another by an officiator such as a priest or minister. Generally speaking, the Hierophant represents orthodoxy, dogma, or those rituals, behaviors, and teachings that stem from organized religion. It represents obeying the law, both man's law and God's law. As many of the world's religions are old, well-established, and slow to change, the Hierophant also represents those ideas, people, and situations that are rigid, conservative, and difficult to change. In many ways, this card is similar to the Emperor card immediately before it, both visually and in general meaning. It is no wonder, then, that the Pope is sometimes called Papa or Father. In the Hierophant's shadow aspect, he can represent misguided beliefs that lead to oppression, especially oppression of large groups of people. Without being insulting here, we can be mature enough to acknowledge that many religious institutions, even those that we ascribe to and love, have committed atrocities throughout history, all in the name of God or religious piety. I won't point fingers, but we have seen misogyny being praised in many religions to the point of oppression of women in several countries around the world. Religious abuse, both of families and communities, is also a common theme in popular culture, as the people who survive such abuses tend to share their experience with the world in the hopes of exposing said abuse. There is hardly any religious institution, large or small, that hasn't been accused of perpetuating harm at some point or another. This is similar to fringe groups that attempt to mimic religious institutions, only to bring about chaos and disaster for all the people involved. Cults are notorious for corrupting the best things about religious groups, the sense of community, the support, and the shared unified belief in something greater than oneself. All of the good things that the Hierophant represents can be perverted and twisted to bring about misery for anyone involved. So in the shadow aspect, the Hierophant can represent brainwashing, ritual abuse, rigid dogma, criminality, or oppression. Numerologically speaking, the Hierophant is card 5, and thus is associated with the other 5s in the tarot deck, including card number 14, Temperance. Remember that we reduce double digits by adding them down to a single digit, and thus the 1 and the 4 of 14 give us 5. According to numerous sources, the number 5 is the number of man, or humans, given that our limbs and our head add up to 5, we have 5 senses, and 5 digits at the end of each limb. 
In ancient Greece, there was a concept of a fifth element, that of ether, which was included in addition to the traditional four elements we know of, earth, air, fire, and water. The ether can be understood as something like spirit, or the essence of the world, not otherwise explained by the other four elements. It was also considered a unifying factor that put the other four elements together. If I were to liken ether to something modern, then I would say it's similar to the space between atoms, or the space within which electrons move. Aside from its connection to man, the number five represents conflict, loss, instability, and change. With regards to conflict and instability, the Hierophant's shadow aspects can exemplify these meanings. Communities that are manipulated by corrupt leaders or religious figures are typically unstable and conflicted. In terms of loss or change, these are harder to attach to the Hierophant per se, as he represents the gaining of knowledge rather than loss, and he is unwelcoming to change as he represents tradition, ritual, and long-standing beliefs. Nonetheless, when one is going through conflict, loss, instability, or change, they often seek the counsel of their church or community. It is in times represented by the number five that we need the light aspects of the Hierophant the most. Temperance as well has similar energy to the Hierophant in terms of virtues. Temperance will be explored in much more detail later in the series, but for now, we can explain this card as representing peace, balance, patience, and moderation. These are all qualities that a pontiff would encourage the populace to cultivate. But how does this necessarily relate to the number five? In the same way the light aspects of the Hierophant does. If we turn inwards to ourselves for the strength to overcome situations represented by the fives, then we need the virtues of the temperance card. Without these virtues, we succumb to the chaos of our grief, anger, or confusion. These can manifest in a myriad of detrimental ways, such as through physical violence, addictions, obsessions, criminal behavior, or other forms of self-sabotage. Astrologically, the Hierophant is related to the zodiac sign of Taurus, a fixed earth sign. Although it does not have a direct planetary correspondence, through Taurus, the Hierophant is associated with the planet of Venus, which rules Taurus. We saw both Venus and Taurus related to the Empress. Here, in the Hierophant, the emphasis is on Taurus, which is traditionally associated with stability, dependability, and trustworthiness. In their shadow aspect, Tauruses are infamous for being stubborn, set in their ways, and selfish. This type of energy is, once again, very similar to that of the Hierophant, as he represents religious institutions first and foremost. These kinds of institutions are meant to be stable, dependable, and trustworthy. So now that we've gone over the major symbology of the Hierophant, let's go over some of the specific meanings ascribed to this card, starting with the general upright meanings. The general upright meaning of the Hierophant includes church, synagogue, temple, mosque, house of worship, covens, congregations, gathered groups of people, religious or other ceremonies, playing by the rules, society and societal norms, the social order, the caste system, social media, tradition and heritage, organized religion, spirituality, rituals and dogma related to such beliefs, guidance, teaching, counseling, conformity and status quo, fulfilling expectations, good behavior, being law-abiding, being obedient, having patience, stability and security, institutions and establishments, especially those related to religious, academics, the legal or the penal system, permanent, enduring, long-lasting, slow or long-term growth, constant or daily practice of something, such as prayers, skills, learning, etc. This is not exactly a card of action, but more of planning and deliberation. Stick to what you know. Stick to what has always worked. Keep things the way they are. And that's how we've always done it. Convention, conservative, platonic relationships, and very traditional relationships. The general meanings of the reverse hierophant include corruption of religious doctrine or teachings, being too rigid or narrow-minded, unfair or oppressive regimes, groups, or people, ritual abuse, corruption in an establishment, patriarchy, fundamentalism, terrorism, religious violence, fighting in the name of God, cults, brainwashing, dangerous groups, rejection of religion, rejection of dogma, rituals, or tradition, being unconventional, different, going against the grain, rocking the boat, unorthodox, unconventional, bad advice, fanatics, extremists, breakdown of morality, run-ins with authority, unethical behavior, 
being anti-establishment, rebels and hippies, superstition or conspiracy theories, intolerance, excessive need to fit in or obsessive need to rebel. Either way, you're letting society control your actions. Being boring, stale, or old hat. Lack of creativity or creativity breaking through monotony, depending on the surrounding cards. Blind faith, unquestioning and unthinking, unwilling to learn anything new. The Hierophant upright in a love relationship or sex reading could mean a committed relationship or long-term potential. Marriage or the movement towards that level of commitment. Moving in together. A traditional relationship. An approved relationship, approved by the family, friends, and or society. Faithfulness, loyalty, fidelity. A religious or otherwise disciplined partner. A partner who has to do things a certain way in order to be happy. A partner who shares the same values as you do, from the same religion or the same culture, same political affiliation. It can even represent same-sex partnerships, either in the upright or the reverse position. Religious or cultural expectations are affecting your relationship. Conventional ways of meeting people, such as through friends or family. Staying with a partner because it's the right thing to do. Missionary sex or conventional sex, no sex before commitment. Matchmakers, letting parents pick your partner or arrange marriages. Finding a partner at church or equivalent institution. A partner who listens and advises us. Sex talk, sex advice, getting the ground rules for sex. Voyeurism, watching others have sex, pornography films and magazines. Someone is keeping an eye on your social media accounts. If you're involved with a married person, they will not leave their spouse for you. The Hierophant reversed in a love relationship and sex reading may include inappropriate relationships, stuck or boring relationship, Unconventional relationships. The partners are of a different age, culture, social status, religion, ethnicity, political affiliation, etc. Divorce or moving away from commitment. Needing couples counseling or a couple who is currently seeing a counselor. Differences between the couple are now causing problems in the relationship. Wanting an unconventional relationship if you're single. Choosing not to marry or have children. Non-monogamous relationships. A reversal of gender roles. A same-sex relationship. A commitment cancelled or a marriage called off. Unfaithfulness. Affairs that may lead to divorce. Boring sex or lack of a sex drive. No passion between partners. Not interested in sharing on social media or no interest in your social media. The Hierophant Upright in money, work, and school readings may include banking or other financial institutions. Seeking the aid of a broker or financial planner financial stability, wise investments, good long-term investments and blue-chip companies, educational completion and honors, graduation ceremonies, successful business ventures, especially for large corporations with many employees, blessed work, luck and favorable outcomes in business and education, money is available when needed, loans, inheritance, tax deductions, charity freely given and received, grants and scholarships, Business proposals and plans are accepted and given the green light. Dissertations are accepted, stamps of approval. Officiated, notarized, approved. Working for a charity, nonprofit, or as a social worker. Religious participation, going to school to study philosophy, theology, anthropology, or sociology. Financial planning and futures. Saving enough, large nest egg. Working as a financial advisor. Legal or financial counsel, psychiatry, psychology, medicine, law, and teaching. The reverse hierophant in a money, work, or school reading may include unwise financial decisions, leaving school either willingly or not, bad advice either with respect to finances or school, corrupt or unethical business practices, no financial growth or flexibility, unconventional majors, field of study society or family does not approve of, Unconventional work, work society or family doesn't approve of. Bad investments, not a great time to start a business, no long-term potential. Unconventional ideas and plans may flourish. This depends on the surrounding cards. Feeling stuck at work or school, needing counseling or help in work or education, trading the nine to five for an unconventional job or a job not approved by the family, friends or society. 
unstable business or financial situation, a rigid or oppressive workspace or school, the need to switch to a more stable field of work or study, innovation and creativity are needed or desired, trying to put on appearances, keeping up with the Joneses, this is done to your detriment. The personality, jobs, and thoughts of the upright hierophant may include Pope, High Priest, Highest Religious Rank, Archbishop, Bishop, Monk, Priest, Minister, Preacher, Rabbi, Imam, Guru, Head of a Religious Organization. Teachers, Professors, Lecturers, Tutors, Mentors, Experts in their field, University Officials. Religious and Moral People, Law Abiding People, Virgins, the Celibate, those who only have sex for procreation. A professional who gives advice, advisors, counselors, consultants, someone who listens to us, someone we can confess to safely. Master of Ceremonies, Justice of the Peace, students and those willing to learn, marriage counselor, therapists, doctors, lawyers, parents and grandparents, ancestors, conservatives, serious but kind people, traditionalists, people who are not easily persuaded, people who like things the way they are and don't want change. Predictable people. People who stick to their schedules or rituals very well. Trustworthy and honest people. Boring but nice and well-meaning people. Goody two-shoes. Taurus energy. Strong Taurian aspects in the birth chart. The personality jobs and thoughts of the Hierophant in reverse include shadow aspects of the religious leader archetype, corrupt or abusive officials, cult leader, the top of a pyramid scheme, rigid, narrow-minded, unyielding people, Prejudiced, racist, sexist, ableist people, stubborn people, selfish people, impossible to please, someone with excessively high standards, violent people, justified through religion especially, terrorists, extremists, fundamentalists, immoral, unethical, or criminal behavior, civil disobedience, rioters, anarchists, iconoclasts, corrupt teachings, bad information, people who want to deceive, Outsiders, social pariahs, people who want to escape the status quo. People who want to avoid school, church, or social institutions. People who want to avoid ceremonies and social gatherings. People who cannot stick to their schedule or rituals. People who want change but cannot implement it. Fraudulent or inept people in their field. Conspiracy theories and theorists that are objectively wrong. People who spread false information. And people who cannot be trusted. The advice, outcome, and actions of the upright hierophant include pray, meditate, or seek spiritual guidance, do your daily rituals, keep the faith, you are committed, consider getting help from an expert, take a conservative approach, stick to the routine, don't rock the boat, keep your creativity to yourself for now. What you've been doing up until now has been working, keep it up. You will have support from an important person or institution. Remain moral, ethical, or legal. Consider joining a religious or spiritual group. You have wise counsel to give others. Focus on your family. Get counseling if needed. Participate in society. Volunteer time or money to societal causes. Teach or be open to be taught. Divine intervention. The powers that be are working in your favor. Participation in a ceremony. Good social media presence. Uphold your convictions. The advice, outcome, and actions of the reverse hierophant may include you are not committed, you want to leave an institution, school, church, family, etc. The powers that be are not in your favor. Parole not granted. You want things to go back to normal, but they can't right now. A routine or ritual disrupted. A ceremony canceled. Leaving home, a marriage, school, job, organization, religion, etc. Marriage is not advised at this time. Do not commit to this. Someone is untrustworthy or corrupt. Abusive or violent behavior. Seek professional help even though you don't want to. You are being too dogmatic. Take a more relaxed approach. Do not trust this institution or expert. Bad counsel. Bad advice. Delayed or incomplete education. What you've been doing up until now has not been working. Time for a change. Someone may be cheating or undermining your relationship. Powerful influence working against you. Hold off on charity work for now. Retreat from society or social media for your own benefit. Question authority. So, we've gone over some of the meanings traditionally ascribed to the Hierophant card, and we've touched on a few of those meanings as they pertain to love, money, people, and actions. 
We're still not done, of course, as we need to now incorporate words and phrases that we sense through our intuition and through practice. At this point, I leave it up to you to add to these categories as you see fit with more meanings or remove some of the meanings that don't resonate with you from the list that I've given. The good thing about tarot is that it is abstract and subjective, and for the most part, the meanings that are traditionally given to the cards are something of a suggestion. In the end, you could ignore everything we've talked about today and give the Hierophant your own personal meaning, as long as it helps you read the cards in a productive manner. Whatever method works for you is the correct one. With that being said, I would now like to turn it over to you and learn from all of you. What are some meanings that you have found to be characteristic of the Hierophant in your experience and practice? If you use other systems of tarot, such as the Tarot de Marseille, what differences would you note when comparing the meanings of those to the Rider Waite system? Are there non-traditional meanings you use in your practice? And if so, how did you come to use them? Okay, that's it for now, and I hope this helped you on your tarot learning journey. If you'd like to see more videos about tarot, then please feel free to subscribe to the channel as I aim to make more videos on topics related to cardomancy, witchcraft, and occultism in general. I also plan on doing some book reviews and recommendations on various topics related to esoterica and spirituality in the future, so be on the lookout for that too if you're interested. If you want to help this channel grow, then please interact with this video by liking it or sharing it with other like-minded people. And please do leave me some comments to let me know if this was helpful at all, or if not, how can I make it more useful? What other topics would you like to see discussed here? Please leave any suggestions or questions in the comment section below if you want. Thank you very much for being here with me today, and I hope to see you all very soon in another video. Take care, and we'll talk soon.